sure most of you have heard the, the word work before. And work often gets used in kind of everyday terms, in terms of you know, you're going to work, um, and work should be productive and everything else. But work also has a physics term, a physics definition, so what it means in physics. And that would be um, work equals force times distance. In this case, when we're having a person pushing a box, that force would be mass of the box times acceleration of the box. That's the overall force measured in newtons, and distance would be measured in meters. Right. So in this case, this person is pushing a box with a force of 600 newtons, and he's pushing up for 3 meters. So what would his work be? How much work would he be doing? That would be just 600 times 3, and that would equal to... 1,800. So he is doing 1,800 joules worth of work. But we can also talk about work in a different scenario. So this person here is doing something quite similar, but he's actually changing the position. Is it change? This means change. That's the delta sign. Change in position of a box. In this case, it's not being dragged along a floor. It's being pulled up onto a mountain. And that change in position often refers to potential energy as opposed to kinetic energy. So if a person moves a box, he's using kinetic energy. This person will also use kinetic energy to pull the box up. But once the box is actually in the new position, so on top of the mountain, this box will now have potential energy. So it's changed kinetic energy into potential energy. And that's going to be quite important because potential energy can be used to produce work or to perform work. Right? So basically in this case, why would he be um, producing potential energy? Because you've got gravity acting down, right, so you've got gravity acting down, and gravity, remember, has a acceleration of 9.8 meters per second per second, so that would be gravity. So in this case, we have the same formula, work equals force times height. Force would actually be made up of gravity times the mass of the object, so that's how much force he has to apply. He has to push, pull up against gravity, so gravity is pull, uh, pushing down, and he has to pull up with at least the same, but ideally a bit higher than 9.8 to make sure he can actually have an acceleration a bit above that of gravity, so he can actually pull it up. Right? So the idea would be basically be that whatever he's actually pushing up, uh, pulling up with, the force he's pulling up with, has to come with gravity. So we call the energy of something pulling against gravity, we call it EP. Another for, word for that would be gravitational, gravitational potential energy. Because remember, potential energy was due when it comes to something changing position due to a force being applied. So in this case, it's gone from bottom to top. It's just changed the position. That's, it. That's all it's done. But it's done so because it has to have to fight gravity. So the person had to pull against gravity, which means all that potential energy stored in there is gravitation potential energy because it was gravity that had to make had to um, make this happen. Right. So. If this box were to drop, so if someone were to drop this box, then it would change again from potential energy into kinetic energy, and then work could be performed again, right? So in this case, work equals gravity times mass times height, and we can say work, in this case, potential energy is the same thing as work, because potential energy is also how much gravity is applied, the mass of the object times the height that has to be carried in. So we can say EP equals work, and the definition here would be force times gravity times mass times height. That's the Doppler says define gravitation potential energy as a work done to move an object from a very large distance away to a point in a gravitational field. So basically, that's more or less this part here. We've, it wasn't a huge distance, only three meters, but we had to move it up against gravity, right? And because we had to move it up against gravity, it gained gravitation potential energy. That's more or less what that means. But one thing I still want to talk about is that actual formula here, EP equals minus gravitation constant the times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by R. You can see the equation we have here, which would be um, EP equals force, which is gravity times mass, times height, is different to the equation we have here. And I just want to quickly go over why these are a bit different, because the one problem with this definition is that it doesn't take into account, or usually takes what gravity usually does, and gravity acts on the center of a planet. Right? So in this case, we, we usually have the center of the planet being important. And then we go from the center to the distance. We have to have the, that whole thing being measured, not just the height from the surface to the top. right? So if we have a person starting here and going to point A, 
then the height would be just that distance he's moved, but we have to take in the distance plus the radius into account, so that whole thing. And that's why this definition isn't perfect, because the height here doesn't take into account radius, more or less, right? So if we have this instead, which we'll call r, r is meant to be the whole distance, distance from surface plus distance to the actual center, that's what we're going to call r. And I'm not going to go through the, I'm going to go show you how it's done, but you don't need to know, you don't need to explain this, right? But basically, we have these two formulas. This one is just the, the definition we got from the last video, which is gravity equals um, gravitational constant times mass of planet divided by r squared. This is just the definition we got from the last, that's the definition of gravity. So we can put that definition of gravity into here, replace that with that. And we say that height is basically the same as r because we don't want to have height just be the surface to the point a we want to have height be starting from the middle the core all the way to point a so we use r instead right so basically instead of having h there i'll put in r i'll replace that by r now the equation looks like this it's going to be ep equals mass the mass is still there right so the m has not changed why is it so dark um, I'll just say M here, times, now I'm going to put, instead of G, I'm going to have all of this here, because G was replaced by that, so that's going to be the gravitational constant, and then I've got mass on the top, and divided by R squared, and instead of saying H, right, we replace it by R, so there's going to be no H here, it's going to be an, just an R. Right, so then if I want to rearrange that, I can. Have, this is obviously times. You both these are times, so I can put them both on top, that, and make them join up with the capital M on top. So because that's times, it goes on top of the actual denominator. Denominator. Right, so I've got R here. And I've got M here. So big M times small M times R. And you can see we have two R's. So R on the bottom and R on the top. We can just cancel each other out. One of these, we'll remove one of these, so if they cancel, that means we've got left just R on the bottom, because it's removed one of the R's from the top, has removed one of the R's from the bottom. So now we have left this equation. You can see now, if you compare this equation with this equation, it's more or less the same, right? M, the capital M can, is just the mass of the planet, but we can also call it M1 or M2 if we wanted to, right? So we can, that's the same thing, so M1 and M2. And then we've got the r. So I just, all I just showed you is that how we can go from that original equation, which was EP equals mass times gravity times height, and make that equation which is actually performed or in the actual syllabus dot point. Um, but you don't need to know, you don't need to derive that, but you will be using that in terms of actual examples. We will not be doing too many examples with the top one. But one more thing I want to talk about is the fact that there's a minus in front. Why is there a minus? The reason why there's a minus is because we can imagine there would be one point, some point somewhere in the universe where the gravitational field, for example, of the Earth would not would not um, be working anymore, it would be too weak, right? Because we said that it's an inverse law, it's the whole d squared, so the further it is away, the weaker the actual gravitational field. So that means at some point, infinitely far away, there might be one point where this gravitational field of the Earth doesn't have any effect, no effect at all anymore. It's basically completely um, weak. So that means at that point, it would require zero EP. At that point, we, the actual gravitational field is not active, so that we, we would have absolutely no requirement of energy to get it there. But basically, what we're saying is, if there's one point that has to have a zero EP, if we wanted to get it to that point, the work done must have been uh, positive. We do positive work to actually get it to that point. We can't just do negative work. But if at, we do positive work and we end up at zero, that would be impossible. So we have to, it has to have started somewhere, and it has to have started at a negative value to make sure that once we get it all the way to an infinite point, it ends up at zero. So if we start a negative value and we put positive work in, it's possible to eventually end up at zero. Otherwise, it would be impossible. But even if you don't get that point, don't worry. All I ex was explaining was why there's a minus there. Uh, to make sure we have, we start a negative point, so that theoretically we could eventually end up at a zero value, even if we put in positive work, that's all that means. But yeah, all you need to know for this dot point is what gravity is, or gravitation potential energy. You need to know this equation here, and it, 
be able to do a calculation as well. And I'm going to quickly go over one quick one. So, for example, if we have the astronaut here, he weighs 120 kilograms. We've got the mass of the planet. We have the distance. So this is the height between the, set, the surface and him. And this is the, the radius between the center and the surface. So what we do is we make sure we put in all those values, right? We've got the minus the g, so the gravitational constant. We have mass 1 being the astronaut. We have mass 2 being the mass of the planet. We have the distance, so the whole r. In this case, is 10,000 plus 6,378. That goes on the bottom. And then put that all into the calculator, and you get the, the potential energy that is required to move that person from from the set, from here all the way to the top. So that's what we're calculating: the amount of energy required to move that person from there to there. And in this case, I did the calculations beforehand. That would be 27 uh, 2 billion 932 million 127 joules, because it's always in joules. And it's minus because remember, it's always going to be minus. But I'll quickly just go over again the idea of gravitational potential energy. The idea is if we move any object from one position to the other position against a force, then we would have given it potential energy. Because now, if we drop it, it will apply that energy. And that's obviously fair enough. If, for example, you stand on the bottom, you will feel that energy, right? So it can perform work with that energy. And you should also know that it's called gravitation potential energy because the force we're working against is the force of gravity so the weight that's working down we have to pull up against it so all the energy that the object has is because of gravity because we have to work against gravity and that's why it's called gravitation potential energy but I hope that was useful